welcome to preview our first ever arts and entertainment show for Sudbury and area with, well, we're your hosts. This is the lovely, from CHNO and CJMX, Vicki Belfiore. Well, thank you. And Jack Richmonda, my co-host, looking even more lovely, thank I think, you. than thank I am. You. I think between you and I, we've got every color I think we, we, we want to make sure it's a very <laughs> colorful show. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> this is our first edition of uh, Preview, and uh, hopefully one of many. Mm -hmm. As long as uh, Jack does a good job tonight. And don't forget, we're live every Thursday evening, but... Every Thursday evening at 6.30, mm -hmm. 6.33, we're, we're live. And uh, what will happen is basically it will be repeated throughout the weekend. So if you don't get enough of Jack tonight, uh, you can tune in on the weekend on Cable 7. Yep, all weekend. Keep watching. Now, we will, in just a very few moments, have our first ever interview here on the show with Cam Haynes from the incredibly successful Cinefest. I'm going over to the set with Cam right now, and you can tell the folks what else is happening on the show. You go do that. I'm going. Bye, Jack. <laughs> We've got all kinds of things happening in the next half hour. We want to fill it with a lot of information, a lot of, um, a lot of interesting things. For instance, we've got Ron Nielsen and his family. They'll be our entertainment later on this half hour. As well, Terry Fielding from the Sudbury Star will be joining us. He's going to give us his impressions of Cinefest, a, a review on all that. Perry Lynn will be with us, and she'll give you all the upcoming events of the Sudbury Arts Council, everything they're involved with. And Monique Bemister. She's into jewelry painting. She makes earrings, clothing. I had a quick opportunity to talk to her, and uh, she's fascinating. And uh, right now, though, we're going to go to Jack Richmond, who will be speaking to Cam Haynes from Cinefest. Cam, yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm honored. Yeah. Very first show. Guest. And look at what we did for you with the set. This yeah. is fantastic. They all look like they're from my office. My <laughs> office is barren now. <laughs> As a matter of fact, when we were setting up the show, I went into Cam's office, and I came away with all these posters, and Cam... As, 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 uh, as you saw me leaving, you said, wait, wait, what are you doing? <laughs> I get them back, the right? <laughs> so you are getting them back. Oh, that's good yeah. to hear. Uh, you like your job? I won't. I, well, sometimes. Right I now, mean, look I... at it, look at it. You get a chance <laughs> to look at all these movies, right? You get a well... chance to, uh, to, to host 20,000 people here in Sudbury. I mean, you must be a happy man. Well, I, I, you know, it's funny. Around this time of the year is when I start saying, geez, do I, I'm getting too old for this, I think. <laughs> but no, it is. It's a fun job. You do get an opportunity to see lots of films. Uh, I, I think over and beyond that, it's, it's bringing a, a, you know, like over the last five years, we've brought a lot into this, uh, this city that we never had the opportunity to do before. And, and now expand those horizons so that the city gets an opportunity to see more of what film can do. I mean, we're looking at film production. We're looking at film education. And as well, of course, the Northern Film Circuit. We've got seven cities on board now. And yeah, which is really incredible. Yeah. We'll be talking about that in just a moment. Terry Fielding is along with us, too, in our movie review section. We'll be talking about some of the films. But right now, we have a clip that uh, we uh, managed to put together oh, okay. of the opening of Cinefest. If you'd like to narrate this along with us, it's coming up on the monitor. And we'll take a look at Cinefest 93 with all the folks that came out, 20,000. Here's some of them coming up in a lineup. <laughs> All city right. Cinemas. Yeah, well, that, that's always fun to see when the uh, the lineups are there. It's funny because from Toronto, uh, this is the, uh, the probably the Grand Theater, but from Toronto, a lot of the people came down, couldn't believe the number of people that were in the uh, the lines constantly. This is one of the first shows. This Ecstasy Trois was the opening film of Cinefest, which uh, was pretty challenging, but uh, people loved it. They walked away from watching the challenging material. There's Marvin at the the city center. We went upstairs and uh, took a look at what goes on behind the scenes and. Some of the cans, of course, that I, and I believe they call them cans. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly. Yeah. Those are the cans that come in. We have about 100 films come in. In all, there's probably two to 300 cans, and they get shipped in from all over the world. This is the, the biggest headache that we have every year, is we lose some, uh, we find them on time. Ilongo Salonse, of course, didn't make it this year. There's some of the 16-millimeter films we saw. Yeah the 60 millimeter projector now that was new this year yeah and actually the projector we had some problems with it broke down on this friday night but we managed to uh, fly in from montreal new belt from it by saturday morning get it back on the uh, on the grind again but uh, i was warned in advance about 60 mil i was told it's nothing but headaches to run and needless to say we lose a projector this year that's a 35 mil yeah, those are the biggies yeah here we take a look running out of two or three let's hope it's a decent film. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are at the Grand, of course, where the galas were held. The, the galas this year, the largest attendances we've ever had, I think that I've, uh, maybe that's ever been had for a film in Sudbury. We uh, had about 1,100, 1,000 to 1,100 people a night at the Grand Theater for the, uh, for the uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday films. Here you are. My God, get him off. <laughs> <laughs> Does he look good or what? But look at this audience here at the Grand Theater. Every night packed right to the front row. Yeah, that was really surprising. We, uh, we r physically ran out of tickets that night. That's uh, Gabriella Martinelli, the producer of M. Butterfly. 
who I'd met in Toronto, and uh, we were looking at getting David uh, Cronenberg to come as well. Gabriella said she'd come on David's behalf. Met Jeremy Irons this year as well. Uh, he's kind of an amazing guy. And I'm trying to see what, what film is. All right, we're in M. Butterfly. And as Paul Breton said, these are probably the most amazing credits that have ever been shown yeah, on a yeah. film. I mean, they were just beautiful that way. So that's it. Yeah, I've never seen 93, that footage. 93, Cinefest 93. Yeah. And now, of course, we're looking ahead to 94, but I want to talk about Already. the Northern Ontario Film Circuit. Some of the shows that you're going to be bringing, we'll have you back or a member of your staff sure. each time you have a show coming here to Sudbury. Uh, looking ahead, what Quickly, is though, in, in November, I think about the 10th here in Sudbury, we're running uh, the new Woody Allen Manhattan right, Murder Mystery. Right. Uh, December, we're looking at Much Ado About Nothing. We're in negotiations right now. I can't go any much further than that, but there is a, a good possibility to be running a, a lot of material through Sudbury, um, just to, to give everyone a chance to see everything that's out there as, uh, as much and often as possible. There's so, been a certain amount of controversy surrounding films that are shown, sure. but is this healthy? I think so. I think if there's no controversy about the film, the film's probably worthless. Mm -hmm. um, too often we go to the theaters and are not challenged. We walk away, we weren't entertained, we weren't challenged, and what do we do with our eight bucks? I think the thing about Cinefest, what it's done is given us an opportunity to see films that we would never have had an opportunity to see, but it's challenging. There are films that, that can challenge you on many levels, emotionally, of course, maybe with a sexual nature, a violent nature, or, or whatever. I mean, they're not made to shock you. They're made to challenge you so that you walk away maybe changing your ideals a little bit. Um, hopefully, and I think that overall with Cinefest, it, it, it's trying to do that. It's trying to uh, take the best in the world, what's out there today, and, and show it. Uh, I don't feel my job is to tell people what to see. I think my job is to give them the opportunity to see. I think that's what Cinefest has really done. And had the So you like your job. And yeah. we're, we're, yes, you do. We're, we're really happy to have you here as our first guest, and you will be back yeah. many times, we hope, as preview features films. Cinefest and Love the Northern Ontario back. Film Circuit. And maybe we'll keep a few of your posters, too. <laughs> I knew you'd do that. Thanks, Jack. Right now we're going to tell you about some of the um, acts, new acts, and some of the old acts that are in and around town. Uh, coming up at the Falcon Hotel, a great group called Lickety Split. Also at the International Hotel on Kathleen Street, one of my favorite spots in the Donovan. Naughty Naughty. <laughs> Could be the name of uh, a movie, yeah. And at the Townhouse Tavern, there's the Hopping Penguins. And at Buddy's Restaurant and Country Bar out in the Valley, Possum. And there's always comedy at Zapp's Restaurant. Now appearing, and uh, we'll be featuring, courtesy of Northern Life, a rundown of activities at clubs in and around the area here on Preview. And we also have entertainment on Preview as well, too. And we're going to be featuring right now one of Cable 7's favorite sons, I don't know if I should call him a son. Ron Nielsen's perhaps past that point, but we love Ron like a brother. He has a family of three, and we'll be seeing them in just a moment. But he has a benefit coming up here in town for a charity. We'll let you in on that in just a very few minutes' time. That will be next Thursday. But right now, we're going to take a, look, take a look at Ron. This is from the Tommy Hunter Show a few years back on CBC, a little comedy routine with Ron Nielsen. Take it away, Ron. Kenny Rogers. <laughs> On a warm summer's evening, a train by the lower, I met up with a gambler, both too tired to sleep. Thank you very much. So we took turns of staring. The window at the darkness, the boredom overtook us. I heard began to speak. song out as his next hit, he'd sing it just like this, sort of, kind of, maybe, almost, eh, a little bit. Mm. Ah! Are you going to know where the home? I don't know where the home. I don't know where the home. I don't know where the run. I don't know where the run. When you're single, I will tell you. I'm gonna look out. I'm gonna look out. All right. Christian brother, Mr. Johnny Cash. Well, you got to know in the hole. Do that. 
Yeah, throws me off. No way to run. You never count your money at the Canada Trust Bank. <laughs> Time enough for count when the dealing's done. All right. Last but not least, Mr. Louis Armstrong. You got to know where the nose are. You know where the fun 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 are. Oh, it's Ron Nielsen with a few of his friends there, and he'll be at the Grand Theatres for La Arche Sudbury. Now, they're uh, responsible for developmentally handicapped people, and they do a great job in the community. And they'll also have along with Ron his family. Yeah, they've invited the whole gang. And we have a little clip of Ron and his family here with us now on preview. Because we are the people chosen from above to tell the world today. performers. That was Ron Nielsen and his family, and this is Preview, and we're here now with Terry Fielding of the Sudbury Star, and of course my co-host here, Jack Richmond. And uh, what we're going to do basically is talk a little bit about the films that were a part of Cinefest, and I know, Terry, you took a lot of them in. What were your overall impressions? Well, I thought that this year was a very impressive lineup of films, and uh, I will say that I disagree with Cam in that everybody thought it was challenging. I thought there were some films that were very challenging, and other films that were very intriguing. There's a difference in my opinion. Mm -hmm. The challenging ones, uh, the audience who went to see them, they appreciated them. But there were so many films that covered so many spectrum from family films to uh, uh, more adult theme type films that it, it covered the gamut. It was a very good lineup. I thought there was never any excessiveness of any type and it was mostly very, uh, very good lineup this year. It's funny you say that. One of the articles I read actually in the Sudbury Star, it was an editorial as a matter of fact, uh, someone had pointed out that they thought all the films were very explicit and that uh, the lineup wasn't that. Did you find them? Well, it depends on which ones you went to see. I mean, if you wanted to see all the challenging films, you had the choice to see that. For myself, I saw a few of them, but a, a lot of the ones I saw were maybe the ones that did not get very much uh, publicity and advertising because they were not challenging but uh, they had uh, good cast, good storylines and uh, themes that uh, were interesting. But that was my choice because I went to see ones that I, I always like to go and see the underdog type films, right. the ones that don't get the publicity and uh, I found that most of them this year were quite entertaining. I guess for the explicit question, I should have asked Jack, <laughs> how many of those did you catch? I'm just well, kidding. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, some of the reviews that I read in the Sudbury Star, uh, you weren't totally complimentary. No, because uh, the films were not all perfect. There were some that were good, and like the ones that were good, like in my job, I don't like the word critic. Mm -hmm. I always find that a little bit too... Heavy? Too heavy. I like reviewer. Mm -hmm. I give a bit of plot synopsis. I give uh, my opinion towards the film. Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's my opinion. Now, I have gone to movies where people have stopped me afterwards and they said, your review was totally against my feelings for that film. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes, you know, they've almost come to blows sometimes, you know, like, but the thing is, it's my opinion. And the thing is, it's just my opinion. And I just let people know what the film is about and what I felt about it. And there's a difference. Speaking of opinions, I guess we can always open up our own phone lines, Vicki. As a matter of fact, yes, if anybody wants to comment on anything we're discussing, or even on Jack Richmond's tie for that matter, <laughs> just uh, give us a call at 560-1505 uh, or 560-1506. Talking okay. about uh, people who may disagree with you, do you, sometimes dis uh, do you sometimes agree with their disagreements? They have their opinion. Yeah. But that's it. It's an opinion. It's not really something... I mean, it's not wor world-shaking if I think a movie is bad and I say it's bad. Mm -hmm. It is just an opinion 
that basically just tells something about the film. And like if it, you have a film that's uh, the opinion, like if it's everybody likes it and I don't, that's just my opinion. Because you're going to find that with every film. Cinefest covered uh, a lot of films and I would say that most of the audiences were always very judgmental. They came because they wanted to be challenged, they wanted to be moved, they wanted to be uh, have feelings, and that's what they went for. And the thing is, when you go to a commercial theater, most people just want to go because they like the movie, they like the actors, they like the, the storyline. And in that case, it's uh, a different ball of wax than when you go to Cinefest, because Cinefest is challenging in some ways. But it's not so much as towards the content of the film, but the films themselves. Exactly. Let's go to our phone lines, actually. We do have a call. Hi, you're on preview? Yes, I really enjoy your program tonight. Great. <laughs> I have a question for, uh, well, either one of you could answer this. What happens to the proceeds from Cinefest? I understand it's very successful, but where does all that money go? Very good question. I guess it goes to the... To the Probably back into Cinefest for the following uh, year. For the next year. Uh, I guess that would have been a good question for Cam. <laughs> Is he gone? <laughs> oh, okay, Cam. next time Cam's on the show, we're going to ask him that question. Uh, did you get to see, Collie, did you get to see any, any of the films in Cinefest? No, I'm waiting for them to come out on video. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Matter of fact, we talked to Cam about that today, the possibility with the Northern Ontario Film Circuit, you know, some of these films coming back, you have a chance to, to catch them. Yeah, do, do you have any suggestions yourself, Terry? Uh, any comments about, about Cinefest? There's a lot of people go. It seems like some people may, may, be, may be shut out of some of the big shows. Well, if there is enough uh, demand for it, I think that uh, Cam and the organizers for Cinefest should try to, like, they know the ones that really had good turnouts. So that those are the ones that I think people should uh, have a second chance to see, because there was a number of them that, like the, the festival, the galas at the Grand, where they were almost sold out, and that shows that there are an audience for these films. Now, I don't think that a general theater could show them and have an extended run, but the thing is, if they are brought back on this circuit, they should be uh, have a, a place, and if it's properly promoted, I think there's uh, no stopping them. Speaking of the gals, that's basically the only one I got to see. I was out of town that weekend, unfortunately. But I did see The Piano with Holly Hunter and Harvey Keitel. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I heard a lot of good comments about it. Did you happen to Oh, yes, I, I caught it. I yeah. thought it was a very good film. It was something that is definitely something that the commercial theaters would really have a hard time promoting in northern Ontario. In Toronto, where you have so many theaters and uh, so much you know, space where people can go and find that, like my, my personal feeling is that I think Sudbury could use more movie theaters. I think we have eight cinemas throughout uh, Sudbury, and you go to some place like Thunder Bay, and they have about 22 screens. Now, I think Sudbury could probably justify more screens, and that's something that I've always thought would be more beneficial. If we had more screens, we could bring in these smaller films. Even if it's a 160-seat uh, cinema, I think there would be more time to show these films and more places to show them. Any final thoughts? I, know I, I love Cinefest. Yeah. The opportunity to get out there, you know, speaking for myself, and the challenge, as Terry mentioned. And, you know, these are films that may be slightly off the wall, but what the heck? That's, that's, that's part of the fun of it. You know, I think that people would actually, you know, come up with some of these, in many cases, some pretty, pretty novel ideas. Mm -hmm. and, well, a, and if they, they're sexier, even better. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a successful year, anyway, for Cinefest uh, again, and I... I know it's going to be just as success successful next year. Just before we say bye to Terry, I, I'm going to run down all the movies that are actually ongoing right now just at our local theaters at the City Center. We've got For Love or Money. We've got The Bronx Tale, Searching for Bobby Fischer. At the Odeon, it's The Good Son. I saw it. Macaulay Culkin is not good. <laughs> and uh, Elijah Woods is in that one as well. I think he takes over now, that cute little boy uh, character. But anyway, Malice as well at the Odeon. Supermall, we have Undercover Blues. Uh, we got the program, The Fugitive, which has been playing now for, for quite a while. Cool running. And starting Friday at the Supermall, we get Mr. Jones, which is stars uh, Richard Gere. Yeah, Richard Gere. Yeah. Brock's Tale I love, by the way. I Did you? I like, mm -hmm. Did you see it? Oh, yeah. Very I, didn't see I like one. it. De Niro directed it in his, uh, his first directorial film. It's excellent. The language is a little strong in places, but... Uh, mm. It's a gangster type movie. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Terry Fielding from the Sudbury Star and Jack Richmond. Again, always a pleasure. And right now we're going to go to Perry Lynn, and she's going to give you a rundown of all the events that the Hello. Sudbury Arts Council is involved with. Thank you. Um, tonight we have a number of activities occurring. Firstly, we have workshops with Yvonne Morso. Um, 
being held at the Grand Theater. She's going to teach individuals how to make native crafts and hide moccasins. In addition, there is a new event at the Demaray Library at Laurentian University. It's a book exhibit called Books Across the Ages. At the LUMAC, or the Laurentian University Museum and Art Centre, there's a gala opening this evening from 7 to 9 p.m. featuring visiting artist Adam Berg. And finally, an event that will not come up on the screen, but is very exciting for all of us in Sudbury involved in the arts, is the reopening of La Galerie de Nouvelle Ontario. They'll be featuring local artist Heather Topp this evening from 7 to 9 at 20 St. Anne Road. On Saturday, we have the Sudbury Art Club presenting a one-day watercolor workshop with Monica Swan for Absolute Beginners. On Sunday, it is the Opera Guild meeting being held at Cambrian College at 2 p.m. Monday is Thanksgiving, and all our office will be closed, as will many offices around the region. On Thursday, October 14th, it is again the Sudbury Art Club. They have their regular meeting at the Grand Theatre at 7 p.m. in room 222. On Friday, the exhibit at Art Effects by Conrad Bobby Wash, a local artist, will be ending, so please catch that ahead of time. For artists involved in dance, travel, and media arts, the deadline for the Canada Council grant is on Friday, October 15th. And finally, on Saturday, the Sudbury Symphony presents dual bassoons, Simpson and Prefontaine at the Fraser Auditorium. Finally, I'd just like to mention that Helmy Kirke's stained glass exhibit will be continuing throughout the month at the Attic at 251 John Street. Finally, now I'd like to pass the floor back to Jack, who is with our local artist, Monique Bemister. Monique. Hi. <laughs> Gee, you're our very first artist. I know, I'm here. honored. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, uh, last year we had uh, members in profile from the Sudbury Arts Council mm -hmm. and as a matter of fact it was from that particular series we got the idea for this show because we had the opportunity to talk to many many fine artists and artisans here in the Sudbury area we have a lot of very talented people we do we do yeah and you're one of them and we're very happy we're to have coming along. you with us <laughs> and uh, we're going to be talking with Minick about about some of the clothes that she's wearing here earrings <laughs> 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 and uh, uh, and a brooch we have okay. here. As a matter of fact, we may have Vicky Belfiore come over and 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 model this, perhaps. <laughs> uh, but uh, you are an artist that deals primarily in what could be called jewelry and jewelry effects. Yes. Well, I started out in jewelry actually about three years ago, and that's how I started it. Just something I kind of fell into by accident. It, it's worked out really well. well. How did it happen? What do you mean by accident? I just well, I just took a class in in the medium which I work now, mm -hmm. which is which is a friendly plastic, but I work with a lot of crystals and pearls and beads Wait, and different said, other things. What you say about things. plastics? Friendly plastics? Yeah, plastic? I know. The oh, friendly friendly <laughs> yeah, plastic. It's not always that friendly, most yeah. people tell me. But, uh, is that a trade name? It's, yeah, that's the trade name for it. And then I eventually got mm -hmm. into the paintwork and like what I'm wearing mm -hmm. and things. It's all freehand that I do. do. I don't usually draw, I usually um, paint. And uh, I get a lot of people who come and say, I want this colors and that colors and it's great. Can you tell us a little bit about the friendly plastic first? Uh, um, yeah, is, it, it's, uh, is this an example? Of, yeah, this is of, an example. Plastic? It's actually a hard plastic, and it's coated with the colors as as you see them. Mm -hmm. And you, I melt it and I mold it, and then it hardens again. So it's a matter. It takes a little bit of a knack, and uh, after three years, uh, it, it still takes a practice almost every day, which I do do. And uh, it's nice because I can always um, have somebody come in and bring me their clothing and I can accessorize it mm -hmm. for them in the colors and the size that they want. Could you explain it once again? What is the basic material? Then? It's a plastic and it's, oh. it's hard as you see and it's colored. It's co right. It comes with the colors as you see them. Okay. So some of them come plain, some of them come with a mixture of colors so I can match them to clothing. And then you put it together. Yeah, I, I heat it mm -hmm. and, I, and I mold the pieces. I cut it and I mold it and then I, I make sure that I glue it so it all stays together. Mm -hmm. Do you do this in private or in public, this molding and that sort of I thing? I do it in my home. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, right. I do it on a steady basis yeah. in my home. Yes. But it's nice because I can do a lot of custom work and, yeah. and it's nice that people can come and have it done without having to go and search for it. If, if people wanted to learn to do this themselves, how, how would they go about it? To um, well, I used to teach it up at Carousel mm -hmm. Crafts. I used to teach it when they have it, and uh, it's it stayed a long time for me to be still doing this media. A lot of people aren't doing it anymore, but it's 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 spanned out into three years for me, and it's still doing exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. So thanks to all the people in Sudbury and everywhere else that I've uh, done work for, they have really so helped me along. So uh, it is it is unique. Yes, I do a lot of unique work, which is nice. It's it's very uh, easy for me to do it, not for most people, but I I find it's very natural for me. Let's take a look at your ears for a moment, if you don't 
mind us looking at these earrings, which are absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, they're somewhat the same. Yes, I made them as a matching set, yeah. yes. And they have Austrian crystal, the pink and blue Austrian mm -hmm. crystal. So it makes a big difference when you work with a nice stone, like crystals and pearls, like yeah. I say. You see, them, you see them flashing they here. Shine, yeah, yeah, they shine. Well, <laughs> wonderful. Okay, now from that, and mm -hmm. uh, now this, this is a lot of your work right now, is uh, with the friendly mm -hmm. plastic. Mm -hmm. with, and I do yeah. a little bit of leathers and suede mm -hmm. and things like that too. Now with the, the work here on your, on on my, your sleeve. On my uh, sleeve, yes. Uh, uh, we should still have Vicki doing doing this interview because uh, and, and perhaps someone who's not as colorblind as I am too but this is absolutely beautiful uh, how does this work out um, most of it is hand done this is called glacé and a filigree and it's actually applied first and I do the paintwork after but a lot of my work is also just strictly hand painted work yeah. so it, it's great because uh, I can say I can match it up again what people want and give them what they want so okay if people great. want to have some of this done. Yes, they can come and see me. <laughs> no, no, how can they get in touch with you? Um, I'm, I usually put Southridge Mall on Sundays, mm -hmm. and I work also out of my home. I'm the only Bemister in the book. The only Bemister <laughs> so in the book. Go. So the great Vicki Kwan over and say goodbye to Monique and to our audience out there as uh, we're all set to wrap up show number one here on Premier every Thursday evening, 6.30? 6.30 live and then repeated over the weekend at least three times. Great. From what I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week with more for you here next Thursday evening. And, of course, don't forget, the arts are alive in Sudbury with great entertainment. Thanks very much to our guests and our whole crew here at Cable 7 for our first show of Premiere. See you next week.